What's going on guys, Vulcan here. So today we're taking an exclusive first look at Tainted Grail Fall of Avalon. This is a game that I've been looking forward to for a very long time. Now, if the name sounds familiar, it's probably because you've heard of Tainted Grail, the board game, or the turn-based RPG that was released back in 2021. So both same world, same realm, um, just something a little bit different with this one. Now, I want to say thank you to the devs at Awakened Realms for letting me give you guys a quick look at this upcoming RPG because it's one I think you guys will enjoy. So let's go ahead and let's get into what this game is. So what is Tainted Grail Fall of Avalon? So it's a first person action RPG set in a dark fantasy open world full of quests, loot, monsters, and it all takes place on this bleak island on the verge of ruin. Now, if you aren't familiar with Tainted Grail, here's sort of a quick thing here. Tainted Grail takes the legend of King Arthur of Camelot and puts a very kind of grim, dark spin on it. It's very cool. It's something a little bit different. So if you're a fan of King Arthur of Camelot, this is a neat one to go and kind of take a look at and learn more about. So what I got to play is the opening prologue for the game. It lasted about 30 minutes. Now, this is a pre-alpha, and because of that, the game is not even close to the final product. So what you see here will definitely change between now and when we get our hands on it, hopefully later this year. So the prologue opens with you, the main character, stuck in a jail cell on an island home to the Order of the Red Priests, who are basically a group of fanatics that are fascinated with the weirdness. Now, the weirdness is this chaotic force that has the power to kill, mutate, or empower anyone who comes in contact with it. It's totally a chance. They even make mention some people go in and come out with horns on their head. Other people go in and literally turn inside out. So it is truly chaotic. And basically this island is a giant testing facility and you're just this test subject for them, right? You got captured, they're like, throw them in a cell. We'll just run some experiments to see how he reacts to the weirdness. Now, after some dialogue with the guard, you end up being saved by Karadok, a mysterious man who really doesn't divulge any information throughout the prologue. You ask him some questions, you can tell he's like, look, I work for somebody else. They didn't tell me a lot. They just told me I needed to save you. Now, once you are saved, it is up to you to explore the keep where you're being held and uncover secrets, weapons, interact with statues that'll end up sending you into the weirdness. There's a lot packed into this for a prologue. Now, all in all, the prologue does a great job of setting up the story. And with me being a fan of kind of King Arthur, Camelot and all that stuff to begin with, um, it's interesting. I'm looking forward to learning a lot more about the game. So without getting too spoilery, that's sort of what the prologue gives us. Now, there's a lot more out there, but I don't want to kind of give away a lot of the story tropes early on. Now, next, I want to talk about combat. So in Fall of Avalon, the combat at this point is definitely pre-alpha, and it definitely feels like an unfinished product, but it does have some decent potential. Now, the weapon swings are the biggest thing for me. They lack feedback. My attacks seem to swing through enemies like a ghost instead of hitting a solid object, and I know this is very well might be due to the stage of development that we're in, but this is something that I'm going to keep an eye on. I want to see if there are improvements when we get our hands on it in the future. Now, as for the combat system itself, it's pretty simple. You're going to dish out light and heavy attacks, cast magical spells, you're going to block, you're going to parry incoming attacks, and it does all of this with a stamina meter to manage. You also have a mana meter for your spells. Now, your stamina can be depleted through things like blocking, attacking, jumping, dodging, I even got hit with a magical spell early on that reduced my mana. So I'm not entirely sure if that's a thing where mana will be reduced if you get hit by spells or if that was a specific thing to that spell. So anyway, this is going to be something you want to focus on as you're battling. Because without stamina, you're a very slow, easy target, just like in other games with stamina systems. But this is also where consumables come into play. So Fall of Avalon has an alchemy and a cooking system that allows you to make potions and food to help restore health, stamina, and mana. Now, the system itself is very easy to understand, and it does have some guesswork that's required to get started. You're going to need to combine random ingredients to learn new recipes or discover them. You can do that out in the world, whether they're written down on notes, whether they're written in blood on the wall. Either way, this reminded me of those old school RPGs, right? Where you didn't really have any help with these. It was kind of, here's your cooking pot, here's your alchemy table. It's all trial and error. Try to figure everything out, and you're scribbling down recipes on a notepad on your desk. So I was really happy to see this in the game because I think it adds just a little bit more depth. I know not everyone's going to like it, but I was really happy to see it. So consuming potions and eating food is possible in combat by adding them to a quick action wheel, which is a limited number of slots. You can put things in there like consumables, weapon loadouts, 
So you can quickly move from like a mace to a spell, or you can use a great sword, or you can go and just consume potions to restore your resources. In the middle of combat, the quick action wheel is going to be your best friend, whether you're changing your weaponry for a specific opponent or whether you're on the verge of death and you need to consume some health potions. All of that can happen. It doesn't necessarily pause your game, but it seems to slow it down a ton. So that's something that I noticed. Now, at a certain point in the prologue, you're going to unlock a skill called Temporal Hold. Now, this is a magical ability that allows you to temporarily slow down time in order to gain the advantage in combat. Now, this is a pretty cool trick, right? You can weave it into your attacks. It can help sort of even the odds in case you're jumped by multiple enemies. Now, because of when you get it in the prologue, I didn't get to use it much after that, but I can see it being a cornerstone skill throughout the game, right? Slowing down time is always something that's super helpful. And then the way you receive it also gives the thought that you're probably going to receive more things like this throughout the game. Whether it's something you have to swap out, like you can do temporal hold or you get another one and you have to choose one. I'm not entirely sure, but the way this was delivered seems like, okay, we're going to have a lot more of these. And speaking of abilities, Fall of Avalon also has skill trees that you can spend points into to unlock passives and new skills. Now, at this point in development, there are not a lot out there. However, you can see where they're sort of going with the idea. So as you level up, you're going to earn skill points, and these can be used across multiple trees to unlock things like a quick dodge or increased stamina. And um, another thing, this game has individual stats that you can level up, like athletics and lockpicking. So if you're a big Elder Scrolls fan who loves to max out sort of those fringe stats, this game has that as well. Now, the old school RuneScape gamer in me was really happy to set a little pop up when I was leveling these up because I absolutely love figuring out all the different skills we can max out and then slowly working on maxing them up. I don't know. It's just, like I said, the old school RuneScape gamer in me. So let's talk about loot and then let's talk about my final thoughts for this very quick slice of Fall of Avalon. So in this slice of the game, I did not have a wide variety of weapons to choose from. However, there are some rare weapons that you can discover if you spend enough time looking around. So at the start, you're going to have a couple common weapons, the guard mace and the quarter staff. They're gray. They don't have anything on them other than some damage. And then eventually you're going to get a bow and a tarnished sword, both of the exact same. They do some damage, but they're gray items. However, there is a rare sword called the Plague Wielder that you can discover as well, and this is where we can get our first look at affixes and what to expect from better than common weapons in the game. So the Plague Wielder will slow down enemies and lower their armor for 5 seconds whenever you make contact with them. Now it is a one-handed sword, which means you can pair it with a shield if you want to. Now the damage was about the same as the common tarnished sword, however the extra slow and lowered armor helped make my life sort of hacking and slashing through mobs a little bit easier. But the thing is, weapons aren't the only thing you can equip, right? So you have weapons, but this is an RPG. You also have armor that you can wear on your head, chest, back, feet, legs, and hands, and you can equip accessories like a necklace and two rings. Now, we didn't get to see any armor of rare quality, but we did get a rare amulet that increased our magic armor by 50. Now, for me, I'm very interested to see what epic and legendary gear looks like and whether there will be sort of cool sets to collect to push us into one archetype or another. I'm not entirely sure. But all in all, guys, Tainted Grail Fall of Avalon was a good experience. While it was only the prologue, I did enjoy what I was able to see in terms of story and loot. Now, there are some systems that are still in development like combat and skills, so we really can't speak to those quite yet. But if you are into open world RPGs or games that remind you of like Elder Scrolls, give this game a look. I put the Steam page link in the description below. Thank you all for watching, and if you like RPGs, please like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you all so much, and I will see you next time.